when we say finishing, I don't know what comes to your mind. So when we say finishing, we actually teach our guys about nine different types of finishes. These finishes aren't just, well, I just got this one, I'll just try this one this time. Your finishes are actually based off how the defense is playing you in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. You want to intelligently finish against that defender based off of how that defender is playing you. So it goes beyond, like I said, it goes beyond you just deciding, I'm gonna use this finish this time and this finish next time. We don't predetermine what finish we're going to use. We are always paying attention to how the defender is playing us. Are they on our hip? Are they behind us? Are they in front of us? And based off of where the defender is, that determines what finish we're going to use. How many of you, you watched Villanova at all in the NCAA tournament this last year? Anybody Villanova? Okay. Villanova had their run to the Final Four, had a guy get hurt, so they didn't do very well in the Final Four, but they had a phenomenal year. Villanova, the types of decision-making that they use in a one-on-one -on -one scenario with their finishes is what makes their little small guards that they have so successful. Now, once we get down into the paint, we actually sometimes have our guards. They'll post up, and they'll use the types of finishes that you think of only big men using. So if you're a small guard, your finishes aren't limited to just you using your speed, getting the bucket, and finishing. Your finishes will be based off of how your defender is playing you, and you will use the same finishes. It doesn't matter if you're six foot 10 or if you're five foot 11. Your finishes will be determined on how the defender is playing you. So I'm gonna have a couple guys demonstrate this. Henry, why don't you be the guy on offense? And Carter, why don't you be the guy on defense? So let me go through each of these finishes and then you're gonna, we're gonna give you a chance to go to each of these baskets and you're gonna practice using these finishes, all right? The first one is the one that you already know about. We call it just a straight finish. You use a straight finish when you beat your defender. So let's say that I had the ball here. I passed the ball to Henry, so Carter's down here in a gap. I passed the ball to Henry and when I pass the ball to Henry, Carter goes to close out, but he has a bad close out and he lets Henry accidentally, of course, go right by him. So I pass the ball to Henry, he closes out, he blows by his freeze. All right, so with this, on a straight finish, I am not slowing down, I am not coming to a jump stop, I'm not, I'm going as fast and as hard as I can to the bucket, I'm taking off and I'm just finishing. So full speed, go ahead and actually finish this this time, you can get beat, but then kind of go defend it. It's there, boom, and straight finish, right, okay? Okay, so here's the difference on the second finish we're gonna use. We use an inside reach is what we're using. You're gonna go off your right foot, finish with your left hand. We use this finish when the defender's a little bit closer to us. So he's maybe just like on the back side of our hip. The first one, it was a blow by. The second one, the defender, I can kind of see him here on my hip, but he's not like even or in front of me. So with this one, he'll take off and he'll actually take off off the right foot and finish with the left hand. That little extra half step of finishing with the opposite foot throws the defender off and it allows Henry to have a little advantage to be able to score it and hopefully get an and one, a real and one, not just screaming it because somebody barely touched you. So with this one, I wanna take off. He's gonna take off with his right foot a little bit early and finish with his left hand because we're trying to throw off the defender who is now closer to us. So it's the same thing, here, boom takes off of his right foot and finishes with his left hand. With that one, Henry would've been going to the free throw line, right? Okay, so we're always trying to score with three points, but if not, we at least wanna be able to go to the free throw line and make free throws. Henry's about a 78, 79 free throw shooter. Okay, so a good chance we're gonna get two points out of that, okay? So our first finish is our straight finish. I beat him, I go score it. Second finish, defender is closer, I step, that way I maybe at least get an and one. I'm trying to use the rim to help protect my shot a little bit too against the shot blocker. But that's the second one. Uh, inside reach is what we call that. Third one, here's the one you wanna use. So everybody listen to me. This is where the magic starts happening because you can do multiple things off of this. This is for a scenario where the defender is even with us. So we don't have a really advantage. We have maybe a small advantage, but not that big advantage. So I throw the ball. He drives, you're gonna freeze when I say freeze, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and freeze, okay? So he's not necessarily like in front of him, like he's stopping him, but he's also, he doesn't have a clear layup. 
We tell our players, we want your shoulders inside of that backboard when you finish. Our Henry shoulders inside of that backboard. Okay, you say, why? Because this kind of thing where you kind of get bumped and you throw up a I hope so type of thing, unless you're awesome like me, that's not gonna usually go in. I'm just kidding, right? Remember though what we talked about yesterday with shooting? Can you shoot it like this and make it? Can you shoot it like this? Some of you are shaking your head no. Yes, you can shoot it like this and make it. Does that mean it's a high percentage shot? No, same thing with this. Can you make it throwing it over your head? Yes, I just showed you you could. Is that a high percentage shot? Also, does that get us three points? Is a referee gonna bail you out on that? No, not unless he's a bad referee. So we're always trying to get three points. So what does that mean? So when, when Henry's not able to get his shoulders inside, we come to what's called a stride stop. So with a stride stop, it's not a jump stop. A stride stop is when I'm drive, 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 and I'm driving so quickly that if you were to come to a jump stop, you'd start to fall forward. We don't want that. We want to stop on a dime. So he's drive, 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 and boom, right like this. You put your weight on your back foot. Your back foot is the first one to stop. And here, and I snap the ball up to my cheek. I don't have the ball down here. Guess why I don't have the ball down here? What if the defender swipes at it? Who's, who's it probably going to go off of? Me, right? It's going to go off my knee. Ah, oh, my bad. Go to the other end of the floor. We don't want that. So we go snap the ball to our cheek. And he comes to a stride stop, okay? So drive, 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 snap the ball to your cheek, and now he can play out of that. He can give him a head fake. Carter loves to block shots, so we'll give him a little head fake. Carter, play along. Okay. Carter's gonna jump, try to block the shot. He goes by, and Henry's gonna finish, all right? So I've got the ball here. Catches, drives, stride stop, goes by, and goes up and plays. So you see Henry's on balance. He can do multiple things now off of that. So the stride stop, come to a stop quick, and now I can head fake, guy goes by and I can go finish, or I can, why don't you turn around and then do a half hook? Okay, so kind of jump but don't blow by him, just kind of lift a little bit. So he drives, stride stops, head fakes, turns around and half hook at the front of the rim. Um, you could do this strong side, we call it a strong shoulder where you turn around and shoot off on balance, kind of a little bit. Everything's on balance, everything's on balance. Stride stop, turns around, shot, we get that one a lot too, okay? But you can do multiple things out of a stride stop playing off of two. Whereas if you jump stop, like I said, you jump stop like this and then expose the ball, guess where it's going? It's going to the, th to the third row, right? You got blocked, okay? And this is the last one. I know I'm talking a lot, but I, wanna, I want you, we're gonna practice each of these. So for the last one, if the defender completely stops you, like Carter stays in front, the last thing we want, everybody listen to me, because this is important because this happens at a young, all younger players and even our younger players do this. They drive, 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 they get some contact and they pick up the ball. Now what, now what do you do with it? We wanna keep our dribble alive. So we'll turn around into what we call a Barkley. Everybody know Charles Barkley? Okay, you know Charles Barkley being the fat guy on TNT that just talks about basketball? He used to be awesome. I mean, awesome, awesome. It was like, for a couple of years, it was like Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, top two dudes in the league. He's a small dude, but he is a big dude. And he would just back a guy down, back a guy down, back a guy down, back a guy down, back a guy down. And then he would just either turn around and dunk on him or make a move out of it. So for this, when a defender is in front of you and they stop you, so you can't do anything. We wanna turn, we use it, we call it a midget dribble, a little short dribble. We're gonna turn around and now we're gonna Barkley and we're just gonna back this guy down, back him down, back him down. We don't expose the ball, we don't wanna get stolen. But the ball's off my back foot, and we back him down, back him down. And now we can either make a move at the front of the rim, or a drop, step, and score. Cam's really good at this. Or a half hook, but you can do a lot about a lot with that. But we do not want to give up our dribble. So for the Barkley, okay, so he drives it. Drive, 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 keeps his dribble alive, turns around, and now he can back Carter down and make a play. Okay, so when you drive, and you find that your shoulders aren't inside, or your foot's not here in the paint, we don't pick up our dribble and now we're dead. Well, I hope coach is open, or I hope somebody else is open. You keep your dribble alive, you turn, and now I can see the whole floor. I can either make a play for myself or for a teammate. By the way, this is fantastic. I mean, we use this all the time. If you turn around and you start dribbling in the post, guess what all the defenders do on the perimeter? They go like this, what's happening? And as soon as they go like this, this is money for everybody on the perimeter. You can have guys diving, you can have 
getting to open spots. So when this happens, come back down here. We say get at, get out of three in a row. This is three in a row. I'm one, two, three. Right now we're in three in a row. Coach gets out of three in a row. He's looking at me. I can find coach. And now we have an opportunity for a shot, right? Oh, dirty. Oh. 